Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be uh, producing a video, a short video, in response to a request from one of my subscribers. So let's begin. In uh, the comment section, Richard Goodrich said, John would like to hear more about your mathematical journey. You have told us some and like to hear more about your readings and the study of the ancients. Well, um, this was in response to the video comparison between flawed mainstream calculus and the rigorous new calculus. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this journey and uh, then uh, explain some of the things that led to these new realizations and discoveries. So when I was very young, I taught myself calculus and I usually read the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica because I, I didn't have any access to any other books. Um, so growing up poor made me read encyclopedias. <laughs> and that's what I did. Uh, in any case, so one of the first things I read when I was trying to understand calculus, derivatives and integrals was the mean value theorem. By the way, calculus works because of this theorem. And this theorem here should be called the fundamental theorem of calculus, not the one that you've heard as the fundamental theorem. But that's a long story and I've talked quite a bit about it in this video here and other videos and I'm not going to spend time in it. But in any case, when I first read this, I got to this paragraph here. And back then, by the way, there was no internet. So this actually comes straight out of the Encyclopedia Britannica. It was some page, you know, page in the hundreds. It was either 300 or somewhere between 300 and 600. I can't remember. And it doesn't matter because it was wrong and it still is wrong. So it says, although the mean value theorem seemed obvious geometrically, well, to be quite frank, the idiots who came before me didn't even understand it geometrically. Uh, they still don't understand it. Mainstream academics are incorrigibly stupid. Uh, proving the result without appeal to diagrams involved a deep examination of the properties of real numbers. And when you, when you read things like involved a deep examination of the properties of real numbers, you must start thinking very carefully. Uh, because that's a red flag. Um, it, it's something which basically tells you that the concepts are not clearly understood, uh, especially given the fact that there, there is no such thing as a real number. There is no valid construction of real number. So it's a myth. The only numbers that uh, can actually be well-defined are the rational numbers. So in any case, um, on my journey, I came across many things. I read about measures. Uh, by the way, measures in, in analysis are a complete bunch of rot. Uh, so for example, when, when they talk about measure in mathematics, you'll see this sort of thing. It says, um, the terms of measure and measurable, etc., have very precise I disagree, technical definitions, usually involving sigma algebras. And by the way, a sigma algebra is just a type of algebra with a few important, two or three important properties about <clears throat> the sets and the functions that are used. And that can make them appear, that can make them appear difficult to understand. Actually, they're long, convoluted, irrelevant, unremarkable, uh, statements of nonsense about sets <clears throat> and upper and lower sums, which led to uh, things like the Darbo uh, integral or the Riemann integral uh, and, and Jordan measure. So Jordan measure really is, uh, and there's also a debate about this, it's supposedly not a sigma algebra, but it is a kind of sigma algebra, depending on who you speak to. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because uh, I'll explain to you <clears throat> in a moment what is Jordan measure. But in any case, 
Camille Jordan was a French mathematician, just like the idiot Lebesgue, who came along with his Lebesgue integral. And most of these things here are total garbage. Um, they have nothing to do with integration, nothing to do with a definite integral. Uh, I, can pr I can promise you that, but don't believe me. Study the things I tell you and you'll find out. So <clears throat> Jordan measure basically is uh, described here in this entry by MathWorld. And it says that if f is a bounded non-negative function on this interval, then m, which is described by this statement here, uh, means it's Jordan measurable. <coughs> In, and, and so basically the measure of M is uh, asserted to be equal to this integral here. But that's not really the case because even this integral here in mainstream calculus is not well defined. And to find out why, go back to this video and read more. I don't, I'm not going to go over it because I only have 15 minutes. So what is Jordan measure? Well, I scampered around a little bit on the internet again, and I saw this uh, thesis, which was written by one Bruce Victor Calio in 1961. That, by the way, <laughs> was the year I was born. And <clears throat> it's an interesting thesis. I mean, it's basically done the same way as any other thesis. Uh, you know, lots of quotes. Uh, whether they're wrong or right doesn't really matter as long as, you know, there is a quote and a source. Um, but in any case, some of the things he says are interesting. And uh, a lot of them are just plain nonsense. But let's go to page 31, <clears throat> where uh, Calio describes the Jordan measure. Okay, so let's see how far are we here. 31, I should have gone there before I actually started the video to say time, but it doesn't matter. Um, almost there. Okay, so I think, yeah. So anyway, uh, Darbo was tr working on Riemann's integration to make it more precise. I don't see how what Darbo did is more precise because it's exactly what Riemann did. And so Darbo began by defining precisely the supremums m1 and the infimum, the supremum m1, capital M1, and the infimum m1 of a bounded function f on an interval a, b. And so he also, uh, in his uh, definition, he defined the, the upper limit to be m and the lower limit to be this uh, sum here. By the way, this is exactly a sum of rectangles, which is what Riemann did. And these little deltas are just the intervals between the <clears throat> chosen points, x1, x2, x, and minus 1, etc. And so then he came up with a theorem that if the, uh, the limit of the upper, uh, the upper product is equal to the limit of the lower product, so this is the upper product, MAB, and this is the lower one, then, then of course, that would uh, mean it's uh, measurable and it would equal to the definite integral, which is, <coughs> which is this value over here, okay? And so he stated it like this, but this isn't really very much different from what you see over here. And in fact, uh, what Riemann did was really an arithmetic sum, as I explained to you in this video here, okay, was just an arithmetic sum. I mean, the product of two arithmetic sums. Correction, the product of two arithmetic sums. So, the new calculus, in the new calculus, all this is discarded and stated in well-defined terms. The, the definite integral in the new calculus is a product of two arithmetic means and it's based on the mean value theorem by the way which is about an arithmetic mean not about some stupid tangent line yeah that's part of it but that's not remarkable at all that there is a c such that there is a tangent line parallel to 
you know, some uh, chord in the interval or secant. That's not at all remarkable. <clears throat> so anyhow, um, I'll try to write up some of these things because I get tired when I talk. And maybe someday I'll, I'll be able to describe these things to you in a written form so that you can study them slowly. But in any case, that just gives you some indication of my journey. I, uh, I never subscribed to ill form concepts. It was very difficult for me in the beginning because my professors were idiots. My real analysis professors in South Africa with the biggest bunch of morons on the planet. Um, I attended courses at both uh, the University of Cape Town and also in Johannesburg, and they were all idiots. I, I promise you, I've never come across a bigger bunch of morons in my life. And in any case, uh, but to be fair, they're not alone. Every university has the same kind of idiots in its employ. And they've never understood calculus, they've never understood mathematics, and they don't understand the concept of measure. And so they've created this entire heap of garbage theory, which doesn't really explain anything in calculus. And calculus doesn't need it, by the way, as I've shown you. If you download the most important book in mathematics that was ever written, <clears throat> which is the book that I've written, this is it, you will see that all those concepts are garbage, not required in calculus. There are real numbers are not required. And there is no hand waving or anything that you see. For example, you know, you'll see term things like this in in mainstream mathematics, including some of the slippery underpinnings of calculus. When you see that, you know that they didn't understand it. Okay, analysis is a, a complete bunch of bullshit. Okay, it leads nowhere. It has no uses. It is basically a whole mountain of knowledge that leads you absolutely nowhere. Okay, so, and, and when you see those terms, you can know. And also in the mean value theorem, where it says deep properties of real numbers and, and all sorts of hand waving, red herring flag bullshit, you know. I just don't even have the appetite to go into it anymore. I've studied all those things. And I can promise you they are 100% pure nonsense. So if you read my book, you'll learn what measure is all about. You'll learn what the concept of number is. It is the most important book in mathematics ever written, and it's free. And by the way, I haven't said everything in my book. I mean, I haven't given a lot of examples because that's not the point of it. It's just to give you the basics and it does that. So you have to study it and it will take you some time to study it. Even if you're a professor of mathematics or a high school student, I will try to share some more of my knowledge and I'll go back to discussing more of the ancients who by the way, were far more interesting than the orangutans of the last four to six hundred years. I hope you have enjoyed this little discussion and that I'll be able to produce more videos in the future. I'm not certain I will, but I'll, <coughs> I'll definitely try. My name is John Gabriel. And this is the new Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.